Here we are. Ooh. We're live. Ooh. You know that I would tag you if you're not on Facebook. Ooh. You. I you're on, but you're not on. Well, my comic world page is, is better be, and I know we've got about 2,000 folks on my Facebook. Well, we need to make sure that they get from there. Yeah. Somehow, somewhere. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> the okay. People of Power Show. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Um, as the viewers come in, I'm going to start sharing us uh, on some of the group pages. I want to thank you for joining us. My name is Kitty London, host and creator of the People of Power Show. And every week I sit down, look, he's looking at me so amazed because this is his first live. I love to get the, get it the first live, especially someone so powerful. But anyway, uh, I sit down with movers and shakers, CEOs, entrepreneurs, celebrities, community leaders, people who are doing amazing things. And I am sitting next to the man, the chief servant officer and founder of Akaba. How did I do? You got it. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I just want to tell everybody, please make sure... Um, you share the video. Sharon is Karen. Uh, we have a lot of great information that I want to give out uh, this evening. But again, I want to make sure that you are uh, fully aware that we're live. And uh, we uh, we talk to our audience. I know this is the first time on People of Power for you. But we are we engage with them if they have any questions, concerns, or whatever you can't answer. You can just say, I can't answer that. Okay. All just, right. Just be truthful. Okay. Just be honest. Just keep it real. Just I love it. Keep it real. And for people who um, who are just tuning in, if you don't know this man, um, government name is, I know, is Jerome Hutchison Jr. Right. But he will correct you and say, call me Hutch. So, I call you Hutch. <laughs> but you got to do it out of respect. I remember when I met you, you like, call me Hutch. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, it just came off. I want to make sure that uh, we gave you the respect and the honor that well, was supposed you. to be Thank you. Well, much appreciate it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick background check. That's okay. what I call it. Mm -hmm. For the people that don't know you, and then we're going to come up to speed to what you're doing now, some amazing things. You're having me floored off camera. I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, <laughs> listen, I thought I met some great people. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Nothing compared to what he has met. I'm just like, whoop, wow. Mm. It's great. The man next to the man. Yeah, you the man. You the man next to the man to the man, man. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Um, and I hope you know, like I said, my audience will get uh, a little little tidbits of people that you surround yourself with. Because you know, I'm a firm believer, especially 2019. I said that I needed to be around people who I want to be like. And a lot of times we don't do that. It's like we kind of, you know, people maybe we grew up with, or people we kind of maybe have one or two things in common with. But it's like. The people that you idolize and you want to be like and you mm -hmm. see them doing great things, when you surround yourself, it's just something that automatically just elevates you. Well, I mean, it's very similar. What they say, birds of a feather flock, flock together. together, you know? That's right. And they say, you know, you can't uh, soar with the eagles if you're hanging out with the turkeys. Or the pigeons. <laughs> or the pigeons. Uh, Shanitra Moore is saying, hey, Jerome. Hey, Kitty. I had to Hey, had to Shanitra. You. How you doing, girl? <laughs> Trying to catch up with you. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure, like I said, please make sure you share. So what we're going to do, and while you're letting people know uh, who you are, I'm going to start, like I said, sharing it with the other groups that I have so we can get more people to join in. But uh, quick background check. Born. Okay. Where were you born? Louisville, Kentucky. Mm. Yeah. I can't even tell. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I mean, normally. <laughs> normally. I'd be like, what southern state are you from, brother? But I can't, I can tell. Yeah. You, you yeah. knocked out that accent. How long were you there? Uh, until 2002. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Wow. The, 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 you know, the most of my life. Wow, yeah. you, you've got it good, because I know people who are from Kentucky, and you can tell. Well, there's a difference between people who are from Kentucky and people who are from Louisville. Okay. And, there's, a big and, there's, a, there's a, like, that's cross the, way, the track. That's the way just, we tell it. Oh, okay. Okay, cross the track, you're going to talk different. Okay. Yeah, but okay. no, it's interesting. As a matter of fact, and mm -hmm. if anybody is listening mm -hmm. who is from Kentucky or mm -hmm. who is from Louisville, they're like, he ain't from Louisville. No. And you know why? Because it's called, they call it Louisville. 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 Just Louisville. one word. Like one word. Damn almost. near. Louisville. Oh. <laughs> so wow. so I actually I'll meet people sometimes and I'll tell them I'm from Louisville. Mm -hmm. And they say, No, isn't it pronounced Louisville? Yeah. I right. said, 
That's that's a, that's like a you know past ten years thing. But I grew up mm-hmm. it was Louisville. Wow. So I still call it Louisville. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, left there, went to uh, Houston. Mm-hmm. Did find my way here. Okay, so we're gonna rewind a little bit. So since you had most of your life <laughs> um, in Kentucky, most of your life, what did you go? What what was your aspirations in like high school? I wanted to be a pro basketball player, just oh, like really? everybody else. <laughs> Well, you got the height. You got the height. Yeah, yeah. And I had, uh, I had the height. Mm-hmm. I had the desire. I had the competitiveness, but I didn't have all the skill. Mm. Yeah. So I played. You know, a couple of my friends went on to play pro ball. My brother-in-law mm-hmm. actually uh, played pro ball. Matter of fact, wow. he played down here for a while with the Miami Floridians back in the day. Well, that was back in the day. Yeah, that was back in the day. Okay. That was probably before your time. Yeah, well, yeah. Because I'm like back when Floridians. <laughs> I remember the Palm Beach Bulldogs. Say that for a minute, but okay. okay. Yeah. Well, that was the ABA. So have you ever heard mm-hmm. of the American Basketball Association? Oh, okay. Got you. They kind of okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was back in that day. Yeah. So, so. it was next NBA. So you went. You were in high school. and You like I'm going to be the next NBA. Player. No, because I was playing with some guys that were going to be, mm-hmm. and I knew that I you wasn't what? quite that good. Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, at least you learned, well, you learned at an early age. Yeah. yeah. So when you went to college, because I uh-huh. know you went. University of Louisville. Okay. And mm-hmm. what did you study? Marketing. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, you know, I, it was interesting because I uh, one day my dad asked me, uh, what was I going to major in? Mm-hmm. And I told him I said that I hadn't, you know, figured it out yet. Mm-hmm. And so it was my sophomore year. So mm-hmm. it was and it was like, hey, dude, you need to declare a major, right? Mm. And um, so he said, well, what do you like? You know, and mm-hmm. I said, well, what I really like is how you could do things and write it a certain way, do it a certain way, and get people to follow it. You know, he <laughs> said, oh, that's <laughs> marketing. Descri- that was a great description. Okay. Yeah, he said that's marketing. Were you uh, were you like a natural born seller, a natural born you know ambassador of things? Uh, well, you know, kind of again going back to my dad, mm-hmm. like he would tell somebody, he says, uh, you know, uh, the boy can't build anything. You know, meaning mm-hmm. like uh, he like his his habit was mm-hmm. carpentry. Okay. So when he said build something, he meant like putting something together, like you know, mm-hmm. cutting up the, and, and building uh, a house or building furniture mm-hmm. or stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, and uh, he says, but you know, he can't organize something. Mm. Yeah. So, so you had that, that that organizational spirit. Yeah. In you at an early age. Yeah. So you went for marketing. Right. Out of school, what was going on? Did you? New, because sometimes that's when a lot of times when we really get lost. It's like, okay, we got the degree. Mm-hmm. Now what do we do with it? Right. Well, when I left, um, I actually went into my first business venture, and mm. I actually went into it with my dad. Uh, my dad was um, actually a Your business. Dad was amazing. Yeah, he really was. And uh, I mean, he was the uh, chairman of the board of the first black bank in the state of Kentucky. Wow. And uh, he and I together mm-hmm. launched Kentucky's first black-owned TV station. You know, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he really was, and I mean, he mm. was a phenomenal role model. You know, and uh, now launching a network back then, how was that? That's a, it was a little different, I'm sure, than now, right? Yeah, it was uh, in '98 that okay. we went on the air, and um, and so the biggest struggle was that it was what they call a low power television station. Mm. So low power meant that basically you had a reduced, if you will, signal strength. Mm-hmm. So full power stations like mm-hmm. your NBC affiliate stations NBC or CBS, and Fox and, yeah. Mm-hmm. So where they can go like shh, all over the place, mm-hmm. we kind of just go like. But they created low power TV mm-hmm. for uh, minorities mm-hmm. and rural communities. Okay, because in rural communities, the mm-hmm. big power, full power stations mm-hmm. wouldn't go there because there wasn't enough money for them. Mm. And okay. if you did it in the city, you know, minorities would do it. And so that was how we got into it. And how long did that last? Oh, it lasted in terms of my activity in it about two and a half. I just want to make sure we were on the screen because I know you were combing up a little bit, so I want to oh, make okay. sure. All right, yeah, you, you yeah. Let me keep lean, let me lean You're in. Right, I lean in. <laughs> yeah, let me see. You got lean in now. Right, lean in. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, it was uh, but, you know, after the station went on the air, mm-hmm. it only lasted about seven months. And um, so it's a really long story, so I'm just going to give you the real, real, real short version. Mm -hmm. So have you ever heard of, you're familiar with uh, venture capital funds? I've heard of that. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. venture capital funds are, you know, they they invest in companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, you know, the the good thing about a venture capital fund is that if you do well, um, well, let's say the good thing about it is if you don't do well, you can pretty much just walk away. Mm -hmm. So it's not like going to the bank. Like if you fail. What, venture capital mm-hmm. funds? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of places don't like to take risk anymore. That's why I asked that. Well, that's okay. what venture capital funds are all about. Mm-hmm. They are about risk, mm-hmm. you know. And so they're investing. They're not loaning. 
So if it doesn't work out, you know, then typically you walk away. You mm-hmm. know, you don't owe anybody any money. Mm-hmm. But on the upside is that if you do real well, you know, you got somebody in your pocket for a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, uh. Yeah. Yeah. And they like taking over companies. Oh. You know, so there's, you know, there's an old thing. You know, he who has gold mm. makes the rules. Mm. So wherever there's an upside, there's usually a downside. And that's the downside. downside to venture capital because once you get venture capital, they tend to kind of take over control of your company. And that's what happened to me. Are you all noting this down? Um, Lynn Winfield says hello, Jerome. Lynn! What's up, girl? <laughs> How you doing? I hope you're writing this down, people. That, <laughs> that you got to Google it make sure you get that information. But okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, matter of fact, a buddy of mine, we mm-hmm. both got money from this venture capital fund in mm-hmm. Louisville. Mm-hmm. And he said to me something that was really cool. He said, that, you know what? A venture capital fund is nothing but a sophisticated pawn shop. <laughs> or pimp. And you know, I mean, I he, it's great networking. Yes, it is. Hey, thanks, Lynn. <laughs> yeah, wow. so, so, yeah. So, they wanted to take things a certain way. Mm-hmm. I didn't agree with it. Mm-hmm. And so they said, well, you know what? Here, here's a year's severance. We see you later. So, that's what happened. But, you know, that's a big part of which, a big thing that you said because a lot of times we're afraid to walk away. Mm-hmm. Even though we're like, uh, yeah, we know it's not yeah. good. We know. Whatever that deal is, it's going to need some Vaseline with it. But we're like, yeah. you know, I want to keep it just to, to save face and not look bad. But when you know what you know and you can walk right. away, that's that's power. Well, the, the, power. the to validate what you just said, mm-hmm. I did use the Vaseline <laughs> to get the money. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. And I thought that after I got the money, right. now I'm up and running. I can run this thing the way it's supposed to be run. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, I'm like, well, hold it. Wait a minute now. Now, I, now I'm not putting any more Vaseline in. <laughs> I stood, right, right. I stood straight right. up. They're like, you know, uh, no, 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 no. You know, I go through, I jumped through the hoops, went through the fire to get mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not going to keep on doing this. Right. Because there's no point. You know, I mean, if, you, mm-hmm. if you're if you pursuing your dream and someone takes your dream and takes it away mm-hmm. and just says, hey, here, just do it this way. they almost become like the puppet masters. Yeah, they are the puppet masters. So you're right. absolutely right. And I'm not a puppet. I know what you're saying. And you know, say that a lot of times people, especially with the show, they've asked me, it's like, well, you would, would you ever want to do a network? And not saying that I would never do a network, but I never would think of bringing my show because I want the control. Because yeah. then I couldn't interview people, great people like you, because they'll pick and choose who I can interview. And I yeah. think that will take away from the sauce. So well, I, I totally agree. With you. Yes, you're right. And typically, that's why people go into business for themselves. That's why mm-hmm. entrepreneurs do what they do. Mm-hmm. They do it because, I mean, if you just want to do what somebody else told you, you go get your nine to five. Hello. Okay. Somebody. But if you want to actually do your own thing, then you get you a nine to nine seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So you think that's one of the symptoms of being um, an entrepreneur is, you know, you get to a job and you're like, mm mm, mm mm, I can't, I don't think I can do this much longer. Or I think. Well, you know, I think when you say you can't do it much longer, meaning a lot of times it's because you see something better. Mm-hmm. Okay, because first of all, if you're working for somebody else, it's just like when you sell something, okay? Mm-hmm. So if I sell, you know, some cupcakes, you know, I got to buy the stuff to make the cupcakes, mm-hmm. right? And so when I get ready to sell the cupcakes, I got to sell it for what I bought everything for. I got to add to figure how much I'm going to rent and I'm paying, people I'm paying. Mm-hmm. And then I got to put a profit on top yeah, of that. Profit. Right? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if I hire you to come work for me and I pay you, mm-hmm. okay, I got to pay you less than what you're worth because the difference between what I pay you and what you're worth is your profit to me. Wow. So you will never get what you're worth when you're working for somebody else because they got to have a profit on top of what they pay you in order Double to make wow. There you that, go. That just did something to my soul. I don't know if you know that. That's crazy. Yeah. Because we don't think of it like that. We know, okay, most of us know when we're working for somebody else that is, we're like, uh-uh, they're not paying us a lot. But to know that you're pretty much cut in half for what, that's what you Bring it like tears to my eyes, for real. Because that, that hit home. That, that's it's real. And, I mean, no, I mean, it obviously makes sense to you. No, but it, I'm, yeah, I just had like a disappearance. <laughs> I'm going to look back at this and be like, ah, the epiphany. Because we, we, we sit and we work for people for years and give our souls and our lives and hope to have a pension and hope to have whatever, the, the, the gold at the end of the rainbow, which doesn't exist, obviously. Because a lot of jobs are just kind of going away with that. Yeah. And you work 25, 30 years for someone else and end up with nothing. No, I mean, you know, mm. you're absolutely right. Now, I got to tell you this, mm. okay? Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Correct. I, I, I agree. It is not. 
I agree. It, it really is not. I agree. You know, and um, years ago, uh, have you ever heard of Humana? Yeah, the, the medical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Humana. Health, the insurance mm-hmm. company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, years ago, Humana was actually a hospital company. And one of the largest hospital companies in, in the country. Okay. And, uh, and it actually was founded in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. Mm. My favorite cor- he- corporate headquarters is still there. Wow. Okay. okay? And so years ago, mm-hmm. uh, I had a chance to meet one of the founders. There was two guys, uh, David Jones and this guy named Wendell Cherry. Mm-hmm. And so I got a chance to meet Wendell Cherry at a, a gala one night. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I'm asking. At this point, I'm like, I'm thinking I'm still in college, okay? okay. So I'm like, hey, Mr. Cherry, you know, what does it take to be successful in business? You know, I'm asking everybody yeah. to meet that kind of stuff. And he says, well, the first thing is you can't be focused on making money. That, I, I, you know what? Oh, my God. That is a sign from God, I swear. Because on my way here, I'm listening to Steve Jobs. Very great speaker. If you've never listened to any of the Steve Jobs speak, sp- speeches, you have to listen to it. I mean, he's absolutely amazing. I don't even think he realized he was a great speaker. I think he just did it naturally. Mm-hmm. But he said the, the first thing that when he started Apple, of course, he said, we didn't think about making money. We didn't think about that's You cannot think about making money. Yep. You're, cr- you, you know, you're looking at creating something that is either going to fill a need mm-hmm. okay, or create a desire. Because, see, that's what Apple did. Mm-hmm. There was nobody going around saying, I need an iPhone. Because they never heard of an iPhone. Correct. Okay? So they created a desire for something mm-hmm. that people didn't even know that they so wanted. So stood in lines mile long yeah. when they launched the new ones. Yeah. Is that kind of crazy? So but when the cherry said to me, he said, listen, you got to have a passion for what you want to do. Okay? And there has to be something that somebody wants. And if you have a passion for it and you are determined and you are committed to excellence, mm-hmm. then you will make money. He mm-hmm. says, but if you're focused... It's strictly mm-hmm. on just making money. Mm-mm. More in times you won't make it because what will happen is you'll do things just for money mm-hmm. and it won't work out, mm-hmm. or you won't make money soon enough and you'll lose your passion. That's true. That makes sense. And I think most people we have it opposite. We say, "Well, I want to make more money. That's why I want to own my own business." Mm-hmm. Or well, want- good <laughs> reason. Great points. It, it's a mindset. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah, it's 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 a valid reason, mm-hmm. but it will not carry you through. Okay. Right. So you that know. can't be the the main reason. The main yeah. reason is the purpose. Right. And creating something that people need and desire. Or creating a desire for something that people don't mm-hmm. even know that they want. Correct. Yeah, because there was no Icaba when I started Icaba in terms of the things that we actually. Mm-hmm. Fully do. It's things that we do. Some of the things we do mm-hmm. are done in other ways. But mm-hmm. when you put it all together, which is, you know, what I like to think is, you know, kind of the unique characteristic by Cobb is that mm-hmm. when you put it all together, mm-hmm. that's where the uniqueness comes into she play. She said that's good, Jerome. Uh, when you find your passion, you will never work, work another day in your life. Absolutely. Shanitra gets it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's absolutely right. Hey, Shanitra. Oh, hey, guess what? Follow Ronza, Alakaja. Is coming to the Hall of Fame and being inducted, and she's going to speak with Dr. Dennis Kimbrough Saturday, September 28th at the Diplomat Beach Resort at the Icava Global Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. She knows uh, Miss Alakaja, okay, Mrs. Knows, Alakaja. Yeah, yeah the, these people. Let me tell you, he told me just briefly their resume, and I was like, "What? Huh? <laughs> like, I need to be in that room." Yeah. Like, this is crazy. And the funny thing about it is we have we have so many great, great, great people. I mean, great, 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 great people. And a lot of people just, you know, well, a lot of people do, but a lot of people just don't know who they are. Because I saw the video, and I mean, it looked like ordinary people, but that resume. Oh, Lord. Well, you know what greatness is. Mm. Ordinary people. Who put forth an extraordinary effort. Correct. Correct. That's the equation of greatness. See, you're great. Yeah, is that right? Well, I put forth extraordinary effort. <laughs> so I got that part. <laughs> so when yeah, you, you I put in the time. I put in the, I have I have put in the work. So anything that I get right. you know, I have earned it. That part I could you know, I'll totally own it. So when we, I was, and I, I briefly read the resume because, of course, the radio stuck out because, of course, I do music. So I just, yeah. when I saw Radio 9, I'm like, ooh, he did radio. He knows some people. But 
I wanted to know a little bit about that as well because this is actually going to lead up to where you are now because you mm-hmm. you have a path you have and I don't like to read people's resume too much mm-hmm. because yeah. I don't want to be intimidated if that makes oh, sense. Oh, okay. I thought you mean you want to be limited, but okay. No, no. All right. <laughs> I don't want to be intimidated yeah. because you know I sit with some great people and I think sometimes when you read a lot. You're like, oh my God, what if I say that? I want to just be real. And yeah. I like it. You're, you're real. Yeah. I mean, so I want to make sure that we stay real. So I was like, I'm not okay. reading all this. I'm not reading all this greatness on one page. I'm not doing it. But <laughs> when you, we, we skipped, we talked about when you were meeting these great people and mm-hmm. they gave you the answer. Mm-hmm. So after that, you said, hey, I got to go. I got to go for it. When did you start to be an entrepreneur though? When it, cause I know you had some radio things going on and. Well, you know, I my entrepreneurial career started uh, basically in 1981, mm. and so I launched a um, uh, food brokerage marketing uh, mm-hmm. kind of company with my dad. And, there goes um, your dad again. Yeah, oh, your dad was your right hand man. Oh, absolutely, my dad and my mom. Okay. So, uh, so matter of fact, today I consider myself a social entrepreneur. Social entrepreneur. Yeah, and so for anybody who's not you know, clear about what that actually is. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, some people uh, pronounce it as socialpreneur. Socialpreneur. Yeah. Okay. okay. Socialpreneur. Yeah. I like that. It just flows. Yeah. And so social entrepreneurship is something that really kind of became, if you will, into the lexicon mm-hmm. eh, about six, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so basically it is someone whose um, focus is on doing something that has a positive social impact from an entrepreneurial perspective, okay, Hmm. and utilizing entrepreneurial, um, uh, I should say, strategies and Mm -hmm. tactics and techniques in order to be successful. So what's she say? Saturday, I saw the agenda. Uh, You have to host, uh, you have a host of events that weekend. I heard Dr. Dennis speak before. He is phenomenal. Yes, I have his book. What day is she speaking? Well, she to go straight to the, the Shanitra, you got to, you're about to hear something that might just blow your mind. Dr. Kimbrough and Folaranza Alakaja are mm-hmm. speaking at the same event that Saturday night, the Hall of Fame weekend. Mm-hmm. So let me just kind of put some perspective on you. Mm-hmm. Shanitra knows both of these people. Okay. And I said to you earlier, yeah. that is going to be so powerful. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Google Dennis Kimbrough, mm. D E N N I S K I M. Let me start. I didn't bring my fan, but let me let me expand myself. Go ahead, tell them about him. And follow, <laughs> follow Ronza Alakaja. So I know you can't spell that. So that's F O L O R U N S O. Alakaja is spelled A L I. K I J A. Okay, do we have them? Okay, can we give them just a little bit? Because, you know, viewers, right. they don't like the word. Unfortunately, we are a lazy society. You know, I know you're going to tell them to Google, but yeah. just give them a little hint yeah. of what he is. Okay, so Dr. Dennis Kimbrough simply is the world's foremost thought leader on black success mm-hmm. and wealth. His most recent book is called The Wealth Choice, where he interviewed and surveyed 1,000 black millionaires over seven years. Mm. And the book talks about how they were successful, the things that they did, their personal characteristics, Mm -hmm. their story, and so on and so forth. Mm. So if you want to know how to be a black millionaire, Mm -hmm. then you definitely want to read Dr. Kimbrough's book. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you, Dr. Kimbrough does something else that's pretty cool. He is a professor at Clark Atlanta University. Mm -hmm. He has a program called Take a Millionaire to Lunch for his students. Because of his relationships with all these millionaires, he gets them into this classroom to speak to his students. Wow. And then he tells his students Mm -hmm. to connect with them and take them to lunch. So last year he had 25 students who took a different millionaire to lunch. So everybody from somebody like... You know, um, I that. yeah, I mean, from a ludicrous, you know, to a, uh, a junior bridgeman. I mean, a wow. lot of different folks. OK, mm-hmm. so Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, mm-hmm. uh, who also uh, wrote the book Think and Grow Rich, The Black Choice. Yes. I, yes. I know, now I know that title. OK, yes, so I that's Dr. That's Kimbrough. OK. All right. So but. he is, I mean, a wealth of knowledge. Mm-hmm. He's a Baptist preacher. So when he when he talks, he brings it. You can feel it. You know. Now, Ooh. you add that to mm-hmm. Falaranza Alakaja. Mm-hmm. Now, here is a Nigerian woman who was 
the eleventh of fifty-six children. Mm. Her daddy had eight wives. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. she told her daddy she wanted to be an attorney. He said, no, I ain't paying for you to go to law school. I will pay for you to be a secretary. So she was a secretary for 12 years after mm -hmm. going to school. Decided that she didn't want to be a secretary any longer, that she wanted to get into fashion design. Quit being a secretary, went to London, studied fashion design for a year, mm -hmm. came back to Nigeria, started working as a fashion designer, entered a contest, and the first year she was named the fashion designer of the year in Nigeria, and mm -hmm. the rest of it is history. Mm. After she began to become successful with her fashion house, mm -hmm. she ended up buying a oil drilling permit license from the government of Nigeria. Now, this particular permit that she bought, <laughs> nobody wanted. As a matter of fact, another company had bought it, mm -hmm. and they turned it back in. They just said, hey, look, we can't do nothing with this. You can have it back. It sat there. Nobody wanted it. Mm -hmm. So she went and bought it. Then she went and connected with Texaco. Mm. Gave them 40% of the company. They went and did the offshore drilling, mm -hmm. struck oil, and now she's making money. But the story still ain't over. After she started making money, the Nigerian government said, we want our license back. Wow. So they started taking her company back piece by piece mm -hmm. till they got to the point where they had taken back 90% of her company. Mm. Then she said, bull. Mm. And her husband, who was an attorney, mm -hmm. they got together, and for the next 12 years, they went to battle in the courts with the government of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what it's like to fight City Hall. We all say you yeah, can't you fight City Hall. Right. Okay? Now, think about trying to fight the federal government. Now, think about going to Nigeria and trying to fight the Nigerian government, because it ain't the democracy that we have here in the United no, States. Not at all. Okay? For 12 years, she fought, and she got her company back. Wow. That's a bad girl. So, wow. we now have a billionaire oil tycoon. Billionaire. Billionaire with a B. B. All right, there's only two female I billionaires. Like I like how we did that together. <laughs> what a B. <laughs> B. <laughs> okay. So, there's only two female billionaires in Africa. Okay? And she's one of them. So, she's coming to the Hall of Fame to be inducted. Mm. She and Dr. Kimbrough are going to speak. Lynn Thomas, they kill people over there. <laughs> exactly. No, no. no she, yeah. she's absolutely right. So wow. imagine the power of having the foremost thought leader on black success and wealth mm -hmm. who brings it like nobody brings it, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The talk about success and wealth and collaborating and partnering for him to speak. And, and then you got Then you got a black billionaire, black billionaire to come in and say, hey, what he's saying that you need to do? That's what I'm doing, and I am here as proof of it. That I've got to tell you. Hey, Nisha. Hey, Jerisa. Let me ask you a question. So, how many um how many seats are in this facility? In this building? Five hundred. <laughs> Five hundred. Okay. Wow. Now, I'll tell you something else that we're doing. Mm. We're doing master classes. Because you know, earlier you kept talking about. Mm -hmm. Not only is it good to have those people around, but so people can connect to them. Correct. All right? Correct. So, with ICABA, remember I was telling you about the uniqueness? Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people do recognition events and tell everybody, you know, how great they are, blah, yes, blah, blah. Yes. And that's great. Okay? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with it. still waiting on my recognition. Okay? But I'll get it. I just have to go out of that. But the key for <laughs> us is that usually uh -huh. that's kind of a rinse and repeat. They do it this year. Next year they get some more people do it again and just keep on doing it. Right? right? Again, nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But... With ICABA, when we create those relationships that we get by recognizing people, mm -hmm. we get them involved as being one of the members of our network. Mm. Okay? And that's why we have over 6,000 people. Mm -hmm. Lynn Whitfield is an example. We mm -hmm. recognize Lynn, and since then, Lynn has been involved with ICABA in some Michael different... Carl Michael, $4.99 now? What's that? Oh, $4.99 now. Oh, meaning he getting a ticket. Okay, yeah. Carl. Listen, you... Listen, we're going to put the link on top of the video because I'm telling people, this is this is why we sleep because we we sit on knowledge and we don't do it. I'm sold just by those two people. And that's not even it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all go to icaba hall of fame too much dot com. I <laughs> C A B as in boy A <clears throat> Hall of Fame .com. And then yeah. you can see everything that we're talking about. 
But it really is. So, so what we're doing is master classes okay. with all of the inductees. And so it's going to be in like a private suite. Matter of fact, it's actually at the penthouse suite at the Diplomat Beach Resort. And each engagement that's going to, we're going to have with all, each individual, each one of these will do an individual master class with about 30, 35 people. So not only wow. will you have a chance to see these folks and so on, mm -hmm. but there will be an opportunity to have an yes, engagement, definitely. you know, where you can ask some questions and so on and so forth. So you mean to tell me in layman's terms, I'm looking at my audience, right? Layman's terms, that you are going to be able to sit with some multi, mm -hmm. multi millionaires successful and they get to talk to you and see you, touch you, feel you. Not like that, no. We don't, we don't want nobody to get in trouble. But this is real because a lot of times we don't get these opportunities. We see these people on TV virtually. Right. And we listen to them or we YouTube them and we hear these great speeches. But to feel the energy in the room, like I'm sitting and I'm feeling your energy, like that's that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think more of us need to walk away, you know, feeling like that and meeting these people. And that's why I try to expose my audience to great people mm -hmm. um, because they don't really, a lot of times we don't get these opportunities. We see these people on TV and like you're talking about Ludacris, no shame to him because I love Ludacris, I'll be watching. Um, but a lot of, especially our youth, we idolize rappers, we idolize sports figures. Mm -hmm. We think that's the only way that they can make money. Um, is seeing the flashy cars, of, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But these people, billionaires, mm -hmm. black entrepreneurs, the people look like me and you. Yeah. And, you know, you have people wow. doing other things. I mean, it's, you know, you yeah. talk about, you know, somebody like Yvette Miley. So let's, let's, let's. You're dropping names now. Okay. Who is now, Miley? if you don't know who Yvette Miley is, no. she is the most powerful woman and or of color person mm -hmm. most powerful in broadcast news in the United States today. Seriously. Hmm. The most powerful person. There she is right there. Oh, yes. And you know where she used to work? NBC. NBC, right here in South Florida. Okay. I recognize so her face. She is the uh, senior vice president and executive producer of MSNBC and NBC News. I gotta meet her. Okay. I gotta meet her. All right. Bad girl. Okay. Bad girl. You see that? You see that? Yeah. And so, for those of you who may also have a uh, a faith bit, mm -hmm. you got Bishop Neil C. Ellis, and Bishop Ellis. Mm -hmm is an international faith leader, mm -hmm. okay? He is the head of the Global United Fellowship, mm -hmm. over 1,400 churches in 44 countries around the world all report to him out of the Bahamas. Jesus. This is a global <laughs> Hall of Fame. I'm looking at this if we don't know. Okay. At the Hall of Fame. And the, okay. This is a global Hall of Fame. This is not just the people in South Florida. It's not people in Florida. Mm -hmm. Not just even people in the United States. These are people who are coming from around the world. Mm -hmm. That's why what we're doing, that creates some of the uniqueness of what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Arnold Donald. You may not know the name Arnold Donald, but everybody knows Carnival Corporation. Yes. He is the CEO of Carnival Corporation, mm -hmm. which is a $50 billion company. And most people think about Carnival, they think of the ship. fun ship. Yeah, I think of the fun Yeah, I think of the ship. But see, what people don't know, if you ever heard of Holland America, mm -hmm. that's another cruise line. Mm -hmm. Carnival owns Holland America. If you ever heard of Princess Cruise Lines, they own Princess Cruise Lines. You ever heard of Royal Caribbean? Mm -hmm. You ever heard of Royal yes. Caribbean? You ever heard of Norwegian? In Norwegian, yes. If you put those two together, Carnival is twice as big. She's always, I guess they're talking about uh, Miss Miley. She's always in uh, PBC. She was just, okay, she was just here, I believe, for the Urban League event. Tessie, yes, even mm -hmm. is a hometown girl. And yep. She's a top leader. I, I heard her speak. She's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So you take, like, hey, uh, take somebody like uh, Junior Bridgman. Junior Bridgman's story. Former NBA basketball player, played for the Milwaukee Bucks. 
got his law degree. The Milwaukee Bucks were owned by Herb Cole. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Cole Department Stores, Mm K-O-H-L? Yes. Right. Yes, that Cole. You can get a crack right there. Easy. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, Cole mentored him. He ended up getting into the fast food restaurant business, Mm -hmm. okay? And he ended up with over 400 fast food restaurants like Wendy's and Chili's and other uh, chains. And now... 400 restaurants. Right. Wow. Okay. okay. And now he's <laughs> into the Coca-Cola bottling business. Okay. So he has, he owns the Coca-Cola bottling in a couple of states in the U.S. But last year, uh, he and his partner, mm-hmm. who happens to also be the owner of the Toronto Raptors, who just won the NBA championship, mm-hmm. he and this guy, Lynn Tannenbaum is the guy's name, mm-hmm. they bought up all of the Coca-Cola bottling in the country of Canada. So he's coming to the Hall of Fame. Matter of fact, I got to tell you a quick funny story. We had him to speak at one of our business forums here mm-hmm. about three mm-hmm. years ago, and so I called the office and uh, and I said, "Hey, we just wanted to find out, you know, when Junior's coming to town, mm-hmm. so that we can book his airline." And they said, "No, you don't have to worry about it." I said, "Why?" She says, "Well, he'll just take the plane." Don't you say he has a private jet. I'm yeah, sure. he's got a private jet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure most. Of the- yeah. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, Bishop Ellis. Uh, is going wow. to be coming in on his private jet because his 32nd pastoral anniversary is Sunday, the day after our so he night. To go. So he's got to go. But, you know, he said, hey, I want to be there, so I'm going to make it happen. Take somebody like Willie Gary. Here's one of the great stories about Willie Gary. Mm-hmm. So Willie Gary basically grew up as a sharecropper, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. He worked for this resort um, in Palm Beach. Mm-hmm. And when he was in college... He worked in the kitchen, mm-hmm. okay, like a lot of us, you know, just had a job trying, trying to make story. it through school, right? Yeah. You heard the story. Mm-hmm. So he ended up, you know, succeeding in his career, mm-hmm. decided he wanted to buy a place to build his office, went back mm-hmm. and bought that place, that resort where he used to work. Yep. Now, here's the other part of the story for those of you who've never heard this mm-hmm. before. So when he was there, there was this old racist white dude. Yep. That used to be in his ass. Yeah. I guess we can say that on Facebook. You can say that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he used to be in Willie's ass. Mm-hmm. So when Willie went back, and there was also an older black guy yeah. who used to look out for him. Mm-hmm. So when he went back after he bought the property, he went back late one night. Mm-hmm. You know, after he closed on it, the old black dude was still there. Mm-hmm. So Willie went up to him and introduced himself. And he said, I'm the guy that was here years mm-hmm. ago as a student. And, you know, so the brother was like, are you serious? And yeah. He says, and I just bought this place. And so the brother's kind of like, man, you got to be kidding. He said, yeah, I did. And matter of fact, you remember so-and-so that got the white dude? He said, yeah. He said, how would you like to have his job? He said, well, hell yeah. Right. So Willie said, well, here's what you got to do. You got to go fire him. Mm. Yeah, he, he, he let him go. I so, that, so, that's amazing. And even when he bought yeah. the, the $10, because at, when he was in school, he couldn't afford the $10 to do his uh, the registration paper. He went back to the same school and gave him a $10 million check on his private jet. Like, I, when he told me his story, he sat like you were sitting with me, and I was just like, you actually have, like, a movie. Like, that's yeah. just crazy. But, yeah, he is so inspirational. You know, These are folks, like folks who are stories. listening right now. These are great stories. You really have to understand mm-hmm. that there's no overnight <laughs> success. What she said. Private jets are great uh, tax, tax write off. Billionaires. Okay, yeah. real estate. They better get one and fly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, everybody has their story. Mm-hmm. Success is not easy. Okay, you have to be determined. Mm-hmm. Okay, truly, truly determined. You know, and uh, so they say, you know, it's not your aptitude, it's your attitude attitude that determines your altitude, Mm -hmm. okay? What determines also your success is your willingness to get back up after getting knocked down, because you are going to get knocked down. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay? Matter of fact, I like the way Les Brown says it. When you get knocked down, he says... Not get knocked down on your back so you can look up, and if you can look up, you can get up. (laughs) That's true. That's true. When you think about it. Yeah. You know? So, you know, there really isn't a real secret to success, but I got to tell you guys, um, being around people who are successful like these people are, mm-hmm. one of the things you'll find is not all of them, because, I mean, there are some folks who kind of feel good about themselves, and we'll let you know that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we don't, know those. Let's, let's not get it twisted. Let's be real. Yeah. 
But you will find that a lot of these folks who are mega successful mm -hmm. are some of the most humble people that you meet. Many of them also have a strong belief in God in their faith, mm -hmm. and they know that they did not accomplish what they did on their own. Themselves. Matter of fact, Ms. Alakaja will tell you that. Mm -hmm. You know, she said she prayed to God, said, God, if you will help me do what I'm doing, then I will spend the rest of my days serving you. And wow. that's what she does. She has, matter of fact, when I had dinner with her, what, I guess it's been about six weeks ago. Where do you eat? Where do you? What what does a billionaire go to eat? I mean, I mean at somebody's it, it, house. Oh, okay, I was thinking like, where does a billionaire go to eat? Okay. Wherever they want. Right. Hello. That, that's true. There's no limit there, right? <laughs> Wherever they yeah, want. You can look up. You can get up. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so when I asked her, she says, "I'll pray about it and I'll get back to you." Hmm. Yeah, that's the, that's the best answer. And so, you know, when she responded this past Friday, mm -hmm. saying that, that she was coming, uh, not only was I excited about the fact that uh, she's coming, okay, mm -hmm. and that, that was like an eight-month journey mm -hmm. that we've been working to try to make that happen, mm -hmm. um, but because I knew that she prayed about it, and I believe that she meant that, mm -hmm. okay, so if God told her to go, I know what we're doing is good. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, yes. Matter of fact, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Forbes defines entrepreneur as someone who aspires and takes on the task of doing something mm. without the requisite resources to make it happen. Mm. Now break that that's down. Deep. That's deep. Okay. So bottom line, you go try to do some shit you ain't got the, the resources <laughs> to do it with. You ain't it's got the dream, money to make it work. Vision, right. Okay. I, I want to open up that's, this and you like, oh. That's an entrepreneur. That, I, I'm definitely an entrepreneur then. You know? Without the resources. Soon to come. So let me ask you, speaking of all these great people, what day did you get up and just say, I want to start a Kaaba? Like, what, what happened? What, what was that hmm. that thing? Yeah. Because you, you like bragging about all these people, but you're great too, so we need to, we need to highlight you now. Because <laughs> uh, obviously, think about it. Without your vision and you doing this, we wouldn't be talking about this. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll you know, all this. glory to God. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'll tell you how we got here. Mm -hmm. So in 2005, okay. uh, I moved my family here mm -hmm. from, from Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, um, and so, and I was actually working in Atlanta, so I was commuting from Atlanta to Houston. Mm -hmm. And I was recruited and took the job here with 99 Jams. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. Everybody knows 99 Jams. Yep. <laughs> Mr. Jerry Russian yes. brought me to Mr. South Russian. Florida. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, um, anyway, got here. Mm -hmm. My wife, uh, at that time, had been in banking for 17 years, had her MBA, mm -hmm. had done a lot of great things, but couldn't find a job. Wow. Okay? All that and couldn't find a job. Mm. She was in private banking, mm -hmm. and everybody said, hey, you know, we know you're smart, we know you got credentials and all that. It's cool, but who do you know? I don't know anybody. We just got here. Mm. Okay? So, long story short, we ended up um, licensing a magazine or a publication, one of the magazine, I'll take okay. it back. It was a profile publication called Who's Who in Black South Florida. Mm. Okay. Now it was kind of interesting because we had been here about six months mm -hmm. and now we're gonna do this publication telling South Florida who's who. And you like you just got here. Yeah. You still find the whole thing. <laughs> we still try to figure out how to get the publics. <laughs> those were big kahunas, all right? I'm like, right? <laughs> but that's an entrepreneur for you. Know, that's an entrepreneur. So what we did was, what would you think we're going to do? We were out and met some people who didn't know who's who. So we went out and got a whole bunch of who's who, asked them to be on our advisory board. Okay. And to help us to be able to find out who's who. who. All right. But that gave you a lot of connections, I'm sure. And so the moral of that was I told my wife, I said, mm -hmm. look, we'll do this. Because my wife, she, I'm the entrepreneur. My wife was a banker. Right. Bankers are risk averse. Uh, Entrepreneurs are risk takers. Yes. All right. That's true. She was truly a banker. Mm -hmm. I'm truly an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. But she said, okay. But the good thing was, like, she was, you know, while my wife had worked 12 years mm -hmm. going to school part-time to mm -hmm. get her undergraduate degree and her MBA. Mm -hmm. So she was no slouch. Mm -hmm. You get it? Right. But she was enjoying spending time at home with the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our girls at that point, it was good for her to be able to, to be home. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, she still wanted to she work. Wanted to work. So this was something that she could do from home. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to your point, the fact that all the banks kept saying, who do you know? We figured, well, we'll do this. 
If it works out, we can keep doing it. If it doesn't work out, we're going to know somebody. Uh, Hello. Okay. Okay. And uh, so that's how we got started. The first um, Aikaba, uh, not Aikaba, Who's Who, Mm -hmm. and the only one that we did, Mm -hmm. uh, was held in uh, April of 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and it was just wildly successful. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were in a room that held 500 people, and we had about 650 people in it. Wow. Yeah. You know? That's impressive. Yeah, it was. Matter of fact, and luckily it was impressive because the fire marshal didn't come and shut us down. Oh, wow. Um, so after it was over, you know, everybody was, you know, man, this was the greatest thing, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But what we found out was mm-hmm. for the first time. I remember the first event at Nova. Okay. Yeah, man. it was at Nova Southeastern University. Well, just I like live, Lynn, live Lynn is saying. history. Yeah, right. no, Lynn been around with us for a long okay. time. She remembers when we first got here. <laughs> and uh, And so when that event was over, um, you know, we started working on the, on the second room. But one of the things that we found out that we really didn't understand at first, mm-hmm. that people in South Florida, like people in Miami don't go to Broward, Broward doesn't go to Miami, and nobody goes to Palm Beach. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. Well, that's <laughs> horrible. I mean, but, it's, but right. it, it was really true. Right. You know? And uh, so, but we had people come from Palm Beach, mm-hmm. Broward, and Miami to this event. We didn't think that was a big deal. But people were telling us that's a big deal. That's a big deal, okay. And um, and so, matter of fact, a guy named Robert Beatty, who at the time when we first got involved with us was the general counsel for the Miami Herald. Mm. He now owns the South Florida Times. Oh wow! And Robert said to us, he says, "Man, that is a that was a historic occasion." And he explained to us why he said that. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we set about doing the uh, the next year, and unfortunately, in November of mm-hmm. 2007, mm-hmm. my wife died on November 2nd. Oh. Of um, uh, a what well, following brain surgery mm-hmm. to correct the condition that she had called Chiari malformation. Oh. So basically, it means that the brain is too small, too large mm-hmm. for your skull, and mm-hmm. they have to operate on the back of your head in order mm-hmm. to give it more room. And she went into a coma and mm-hmm. never recovered. Mm. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, wow. and so. Uh, people kept asking afterwards, you know, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Are you going to keep this going? And I finally decided that I would. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I, I looked at the who's who people. Mm-hmm. I felt like there was a lot more to do than just an annual publication and an annual event. Right. Okay. Because it's like what do we do throughout the year. Exactly. Gotcha. So, so since then, after we started at Cobb in the past mm-hmm. 10 years, we have um, produced over 140 events with over 15,000 people who have attended. We have profiled over 1,000 black professionals and entrepreneurs in this marketplace, Mm -hmm. you know, in in, in print. And um, and so now we have a a social networking platform, Mm -hmm. Mm iCabaWorld.com, and we have over 6,000 people in our network. We now also have a a chapter in Atlanta, and we've got people who are working on building a chapter in Tampa and also in Houston. And hopefully after the... um, you know, this event with the Hall of Fame mm-hmm. weekends over, we'll see people wanting to do chapters in some other cities as well. That's, that's really dope. Yeah. I like that. I, what is that? I still have the first Icaba book in the magazine with Pam on the cover. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So for people who are, like, listening and they're like, okay, we get what a Cabo is. Can I join? How does that, how does that work? Yeah, you, you can. Mm-hmm. Is it open for? It is. Okay. So go to icabaworld.com. That's I C A B A W O R L D dot com. Okay, I'm going to put that on the video too. I'll edit that. Okay. Put that on the video. So go to icabaworld.com and everything that you need to know is there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you can join. And you can join uh, as an associate. Or an executive, which takes you at two fifty a year, mm-hmm. all the way up to a corporate level membership, which is fifteen hundred a year for mm-hmm. four people, four individuals. It's mm-hmm. a corporate membership, but four individuals come with that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's an annual membership. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll get. We have our own social uh, networking mm-hmm. platform. Mm-hmm. I like to call it uh, Blinkton. Blinkton. Okay. Okay. <laughs> look at look look at this, Erica. That Erica is on point. This is but, I, but yeah. you know, don't get scared of the price because I did see that you have it kind of broken up. You could do monthly. Oh. Monthly, Listen, yeah. you know I knew because I was checking. I was like, wait a minute, it's school time, but I yeah. want to join. Listen, <laughs> but you know, when you when you're entrepreneurs, you're new. You, yeah. you might not have a lot of funding, but I like it that you do make it available for, because 250 is only $23 a month, honey. There you go. You got it. You got it. Twenty. And listen, I spend that a week on um, lattes. You know, <laughs> I'm sad, it's, it's, it's so cool. real what you just said. Um, <laughs> one of the true. things that is um, critical important, so whether you join a cop or whatever you do, I'm mm-hmm. not pushing 
I cover, so to speak. What I'm pushing is is that if but no, I, and I appreciate that. I really right. do. Right. But what I'm saying to people mm -hmm. who are listening, don't tell me that you want to be successful. Don't tell me that you want to be wealthy. Don't tell me that you're trying to be anything more don't, than what you are invest. if you're not investing in yourself. Right. And you have to you, invest in your growth. $23, and even if you're starting off, I would just say, even if you want to start off and see it, because a lot of times people are like, okay, I want to see how the club is. $23 a month is nothing. It's not a week. It's nothing. Trust me. I Like I said, I spend that in coffee in a week. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Easy. So I think it's very affordable. And I've been to um, a couple of events. Um, shout out to Celicia Smith Gordon. She was actually honored at one of the events in West Palm Beach. So mm -hmm. I saw, you know, the culture and it's it's very you know, you you're with like minded people but they're just successful and nobody was standoffish. Everybody was welcoming. So I was like, I, I need to find out more information on how to join and that's why I know the pricing so well. Because mm -hmm. I did look. Okay. All so right. I wanna make sure my viewers are able to So you to joining? I am joining. There you go. I'm gonna join. All I'm right. Gonna okay. There Listen, we go. for twenty three dollars a month you can't I mean, come on. And, and and then you get exposed. I mean, there are, of course, levels to it. But for an event like this, um, and I'm sure this happens, like, what, once a year? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you, yeah, you have, this is the first one. Okay. Because I'm going to say the, the how whole thing, like this. this. Is, that, yeah, once a year. Yeah, that's like a lot of work, girl. Matter of fact, what, what, let me tell people. So, you know, you've heard us talk about the, the recognition piece in mm -hmm. terms of the Global Hall of Fame weekend. Mm -hmm. But that's not all that's going on. Okay. So on Thursday, we have the Career and Business Thursday Summit. Thursday is September 26th. There so you, you go. you have time. Mm-hmm. And then on, so we've got um, a guy named Dr. Robert Wallace. Mm-hmm. Bad brother out of Baltimore. Mm. He's the uh, owner and founder of Bith Group Technologies. Mm -hmm. Author. He's written seven books on entrepreneurship. Mm. Okay, I've been following him for over 25 years. Wow. His first book is called Black Wealth Through Entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And he's got this latest one is on strategic partnerships, which he's really telling us how we partner together, collaborate. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a sister named Daphne Jones who's speaking, and she's going to be talking about people who want to get on corporate boards, that process. She's the former mm. chief information officer for GE Healthcare, which was a $12 billion division of GE. Wow. Okay. Uh, and so we also have... The, uh, the Global Health Summit the next day, mm -hmm. and we have a woman named uh, Dr. Carla Denise Edwards coming from Providence St. Joseph mm -hmm. out in Seattle, Washington to be mm -hmm. a keynote speaker in the morning. Mm -hmm. She is um, just a phenomenal, and Providence St. Joe is the third largest health care system in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, We also have uh, a guy named Dr. Garth Graham, okay. who is the president of the Aetna Healthcare Foundation mm -hmm. who's coming. He also runs the community health for CVS, the large drugstore chain. Mm. Uh, so we've got a lot of great people coming in for that. We're doing all my doctors that you know I'm friends with. Please make sure, especially you check that out. Um, have I don't know if, if Jerisa, Dr. Jerisa Barry, still on the Barry, they're physicians, and that's wonderful. Yeah, um, nurses. Um, I have quite a few RNs um, mm -hmm. on here, so that's a great one to go check out. Now, we've got some people that are coming from Palm Beach. We've okay. got Dr. Osiami, the Triple O Medical Center. Okay. So he'll be in there. Um, also, Alan Bator from Teledactyl. You yes, know. I had him on my show. Yeah. So he, weeks ago. Yeah. So actually, he's on our planning committee. So he's been helping wow. to, to, you know, the yeah. planning. His, his, I'm like really excited about his, uh, his venture. Yeah. I think he's going to be world yeah crazy. oh yeah hey jerisa you there so um dr risa Berry. but yeah make sure you check that out because that's that's the one and i don't know you all need to meet too and jerisa you need to get on board with the start with 23 dollars a month or more you, <laughs> you, you got a little more than me so you make and do the the, the the bigger one but yeah um she's another mover and shaker as well too yeah. so definitely um get her out there and say Erica, I feel when we pay for things, we tend to take it seriously. Yeah. It also shows you're really interested. Time is money. Yeah, absolutely. So then also Friday night now, you know. You party. We, you we, got three well, said, we, we ain't all work and no play. Well, you got to so, come on now. What they say? Work hard, play harder. I'm telling you. Oh, and uh, so we're going to play. As a matter of fact, okay. our host for the night, mm -hmm. okay, is a guy named Rico Love. Rico Love. Rico Love is a Grammy Award winning producer. songwriter and producer. Yes, he has. Yeah. He has. Um. Oh wow, that is okay. I have to tell you about that online, but that's crazy. Okay. Because he, yeah, he has Wednesday nights. Um, down south, he's so, doing. So, oh wow. He's the host Small for tonight. World. DJ okay. Don Hot, who's mm -hmm. down at Live and some of the other okay. South Beach clubs. That's, wow. He's going to be spinning. Mm. Uh, we also have them now. You know, you think that's tough. 
I got two <laughs> badass he trying, sisters. He's trying to just make me fall out over here. I don't know what. I got doing. two badass sisters who are okay. the host partners for everything. Oh, we know okay? who that is. All right, Nicole and Delisa. Delisa yeah. Kirk. Giants. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So they gonna they gonna they're they're setting it off. Okay. Okay. okay? That's Friday. So that's and that's Friday night mm -hmm. down at level three. Okay. In the Abitur area. Okay. And the venue is amazing. Mm. Okay. It's gonna be off the chain. Mm. All right. Okay. Saturday, uh, Friday and Saturday, we're doing the master classes. Okay. So we got a penthouse suite at the Diplomat. And so, if you've got tickets, you know, to the events, then you're eligible to come to the master class. Mm -hmm. There's no additional charge for that. Okay. And uh, Saturday, we also are doing the um, uh, diversity mm -hmm. and inclusion conference. Mm -hmm. Speaking, we got keynote speakers, a guy named Johnny Taylor, who is the CEO of SHRM. If you don't know what SHRM is, SHRM is the Society of Human Resource Management, okay. which is the largest uh, organization worldwide for human resource executives and managers, mm -hmm. 300,000 of them. There's a brother from Fort Lauderdale named Johnny Taylor who was their CEO. Wow. So he's a keynote speaker mm -hmm. for the breakfast. Okay. The lunch keynote speaker is none other than Arnold Donald, the CEO from Carnival Corporation. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also have Yvette Miley, who I was talking yes. about, who is speaking at this diversity as well. And we've got uh, wow. Dr. Gail Price Wise and Dr. Mm -hmm. Angelique Grant and some other people. It's just going to be phenomenal off the chain. Mm -hmm. We're partnering with the National Diversity Council and other folks to put that on. Mm -hmm. Then that night, the big show, Hall of Fame Gala. That you're going on this. <laughs> when you come out looking like a million dollars. Black tie. Oh. Get all like dressed up. Dollars. That's right. I got, I feel in all plies. I got grip for sale. <laughs> grip for sale. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then Sunday, <laughs> we want you to come up a little early. Okay. To nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Because we do none of this without the father. Mm -hmm. So Sunday morning. That makes sense. We're gonna get up. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go out and have a prayer service. We got Dr. Emmanuel Effer from Nigeria, mm -hmm. and Dr. Nelson Adams from Miami. Mm -hmm. And they're both going to pray and ask God's blessing on what we have done over the weekend mm -hmm. so that we can carry that forward mm -hmm. into this movement of black people connecting with each other, building relationships, growing wealth, enhancing leadership, and becoming empowered. Mm. That's, a, that's a lot. Yeah. Because we ain't here just to play. This is serious. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we're going to have a good time. And then we're going to close out with a, a brunch, which is a salute mm -hmm. to women of impact and men who lead. Mm. And that's on September 29th. Right. So from September 26th to September 29th, you are going to be on fire. On fire. Diplomat Beach Resort. That's a lot. That's, that's serious. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. They just spent $20 million renovating it. Ooh. Well, it's on. Can you imagine all the selfie possibilities? You know, I'm a selfie queen, so I'll be... Diplomat, diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. This is awesome. So all this information, because I, I did get a packet here. I, I got a, I got a flyer. And I'm definitely going to share this um, on my page. Well, you know what I'm going to do? And make sure that we um we get this out for you, because we need to get some of these people here. You know what I'm going to do? No, I don't know. Let me, let me, no, I don't know what you're going to do. Y'all ladies, he got green eyes, so you know when we got green <laughs> eyes and their eyes dilate, you don't never know what they're going to do. <laughs> so I'm away. I don't know. What, what are you going to do? All right. So one of the people who's doing mm -hmm. a master class mm -hmm. is Yvette Miley. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to make an executive decision mm -hmm. on the spot right here in front of you. Mm hmm and when we do the master class for Yvette Miley, mm -hmm. we're going to do it in conjunction with people of power. And you will be the moderator. Oh, my God. I'm not going to cry in front of y'all. And you're going to be in front of moderating a I'm not gonna master cry class with the most powerful person, cry. woman mm. of color mm. in broadcast news in the United States of America. Listen, you see this? 
I'm not going to cry in front of y'all. Thank you. It's all about relationships. I'm not going to cry in front of y'all. No, I'm not going to cry. Okay. Thank you. And anybody who's been in Icaba for any period of time mm -hmm. will tell you that I am dead serious about that and putting people in places where they have a chance, you know, to grow. Thank you. So you need to get ready. Thank you. I said I wasn't going to cry, but it came out. All right, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Thank you. We have to support each other. Mm hmm Okay? And it doesn't cost me anything. I don't have to give you $1,000 or $10,000, a million dollars to put you in an opportunity. Who knows what will happen? Right. Okay? Right. Okay? More people have succeeded because they were in the right place because they knew the right person. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily all who you know. It's who knows you. you. Okay? Right. So I got to get a new wig, y'all. Got to make sure that, um, you know. I'm ready. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I just, I, you know, I think you're now going to be a part of my blueprint. You will have that uh, when I get my, uh, my, <laughs> my award. I'm like, Hutch! <laughs> God, thank you, Hutch! You, you, you know, you put me into another, you know, I don't know, situation yeah. that, thank you. Well, see, here's the whole relationship mm -hmm. train. So how do we get connected to do this? Through soul. Mm -hmm. Through soul, yep. And Delisa. Yep, and through Delisa, yep. And, yeah, that's true. That's okay. true. Because I remember, I was going to say, I was kind of thinking a little further back. Right. Okay. Um, when you honored Delisa. Mm -hmm. And I said, I got to meet him. I got to I gotta get to know who he is. Mm -hmm. But this was like fast forward and then... When I did the show, and they said, you know what? I'm like, yeah, I remember him that, from yeah. Wakaba. I remember him. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it just, it was meant. Because it, yeah. was, it, was, it was the connections of multiple people. So, usually when it happens, that means that it, it's, it's meant to happen. Yeah. We just have to lift people up. Now, now here's the thing that I tell everybody, mm -hmm. okay? Because this is serious, mm -hmm. okay? Then we have to go out, and then we got to do our thing. You know, we got to represent. Mm -hmm. And I need you to be ready to represent. I will. You know? Mm -hmm. I and, take it seriously. And, and, and then mm -hmm. there's the only you thing. Speak it to Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and then the only thing that you got to do mm -hmm. is pay it forward by bringing somebody with you. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I, I do that now. I do that without the help. Because mm -hmm. that's why I do the show. And, you know, God has used me to be able to give people platforms mm -hmm. who've never gotten a platform. Yeah. And so now they look at me and they thank me and say, you know, you had me on your show. I've never done a live, but now I have these people calling me, these people calling me, these people. And I'm like, I, I'm just being obedient. Mm -hmm. I've done these shows when I have not been feeling good. Yeah. But because I said I'm going to do this and I'm going to help this person, mm -hmm. this is why I'm here. Yeah. So. Now let me tell all my, my people out here that are listening. Me, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying right. not to cry, y'all. <laughs> Black people do help each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. We do help each other. Sure. You know, I hear all that crab in the, you know, barrel yeah. stuff. We do help each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you look at Oprah and what she's done through the own network and mm -hmm. all the people that she's pulling up, mm -hmm. the Ava DuVernay's and all the people who are working on the shows that she's doing in front of the camera, behind the camera, mm -hmm. I mean, you look at somebody like John H. Johnson. If there had not been a John H. Johnson who was putting, if you will, positive images of black folks out there in Ebony and Jet mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, there would not be an Oprah Winfrey. It's true. Okay? So, people, we got to really understand. We do help each other. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we got to keep it moving. If Spike Lee hadn't been successful with the movies that he did, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't have, you know, all the people that have come behind him and all the black movies that we have now, That's you know. True. Tyler and, Perry. You know, and so we are helping each other, and we just have to continue to do that and mm -hmm. stop saying that we don't. Now, the only other thing that I really focused on, mm -hmm. we work real hard to mm -hmm. do well. When I say do well, I'm talking about being excellent. 
Okay? Because we do still have to be twice as good. Yes. Okay? Right. And so when somebody pulls you up, mm -hmm. then you got to show up and show out. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Okay. And then bring somebody else along. Because when you do that, you make it easier for the next person. Mm -hmm. Well, I promise. I, I promise. know you will. I promise that I am going to make you proud and that, trust me, I, I mean, I'm doing this every week anyway. I, like I said, over 200 interviews um, of people who normally don't have a platform. I, granted, I've met with some great people who have platforms, who've been on CNN, who have money. But there's a lot of people who I've sat with who have never did an interview. Um, so I'm, I'm paying my dues. Mm hmm but I want to be blessed more because I want to do more. I want to help more people. So I'm just grateful for the opportunities that I'm given. I have another, I, I have to tell you about this later, but I have another great opportunity. I meet with some people tomorrow and I just, I'm just, it's kind of like I'm getting an overflow. Mm -hmm. I'm getting my great karma back. Mm -hmm. It's great karma coming back. Keep God first, girl. You know, can't beat it. So I want you all to please make sure. Um, yeah, that's right. We always <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to make sure that, you know, more people know about this amazing, amazing um, event. Also, join Akaba. I mean, like I said, there, there are platforms, but I have to speak to my people and be relatable. Only $23 a month. That's the lowest you can get. I mean, that's, but to meet great people, this is the founder. This is the big dog. This is, you, don't, you know. Chief servant. <laughs> the chief servant officer but i have to tell you that i mean because you know we a lot of times we don't get to meet the ceos of, of or or chief servant officers we kind of meet the the liaison or maybe the vp or but you are the man you you are the man i'm just I'm just just doing what god you know i'm glad that you're humble to do. but i'm just saying you are well, well i appreciate it you are the man yeah, you know and that's what we're all doing. Right. Okay. And that speaks volumes for the, in, in these people, I'm, I'm not yet on your level when I say yet because I, I, sh I strive to be like you, but I have great connections with people in my community and certain events, people will say, well, how did you get these people to come? Mm -hmm. And I just simply say, ask, right? <laughs> I, I just ask. And sometimes that's all you got to right, do. Right, I ask. ask. Yeah. Um, but not only just with the asking, for them to say yes, it speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. Because you can ask and get mm -hmm. a lot of no's. Mm -hmm. But when they say, I'll do it for you, because it's you. Mm -hmm. and you get that. That mm -hmm. speaks volumes. So I'm telling you to have this caliber of people to say yes to you. Mm -hmm. That speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, and every no is not fatal. Mm, hear that? Okay. Every no is not fatal. You know, every failure is not fatal. Matter of fact, I won't say who, but there's a guy on this list. The first time I talked to him about what we were doing, mm -hmm. he blew me off. Mm -hmm. The second time I talked to him about it, he was almost asking me to be in it. Because when I told him about who the other people were that were coming. Yeah. yeah well, he he's was, like, I'm in good company. Yeah. And, you know, we have to understand people are, you know, kind of motivated. But now, let me, now, mm -hmm. that may seem like he was just, you know, doing this because now it, it was just going to be something for him. Mm -hmm. But you also have to understand this, too. That these people, that everybody who's coming here does not need an award. Mm -hmm. They got plaques, honors, awards, right. and recognition coming out of their All ears. Right. Okay? Like this woman's Renona Clayton. Mm -hmm. She's got a big office in Atlanta. Matter of fact, right off of Renona Clayton Boulevard. She had her own boulevard. Downtown Atlanta. Sir Nona Clayton Boulevard. I'd like to tell this funny story. We did an event in Atlanta. And she was the co-chair along with the guy at the time who was running Atlanta Airport. Mm -hmm. And it was sponsored by Celebrity Cruises. And the sister who was the marketing manager for Celebrity Cruises, when mm -hmm. I told her that Zernona was going to be the co-chair, she didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you don't know? I said, okay. So I told her who she was. She said, okay. But three weeks later, she gets me a call. And she says, I know who Zernona Clayton is now. I said, really? I said, what happened? Mm -hmm. She says, well, I was driving to downtown Atlanta, and I looked up, and I was on Zernona Clayton <laughs> Boulevard. Wow, they have a street. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, see, this is, this is okay. what I'm talking about. Okay, this woman's office mm -hmm. has hardly any, and I'm telling you, she's got a big office, okay, mm -hmm. with a suite of offices, has hardly any room for anything because there's so many plaques, awards, mm -hmm. pictures with famous people, mm -hmm. 
all over the place. My point being is, like when I talked to Junior Bridgman about coming, and he said, Jerome, you know I don't need another award. Mm. He says, but I like what you're doing, and I like he. But I was, I just told him about the master classes, the being able to connect. Mm -hmm. I love that. He wants to be here to give back to some people and have that kind of conversation. Mm. These people are not coming because they need another award. They're coming in part because, yeah, they're going to be in good company, and mm -hmm. you know, people like to kind of be around people like themselves. Correct. That's that's a dynamic. Mm -hmm. It definitely is there, mm -hmm. but they also want to give back. They see the value. Mm. I'm just praying that people, once I put the link on, mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm, I'm really asking for people who don't ordinarily go to events like this, who probably say, you know, uh, that's not, please make sure you invest in it. Because usually those type of events, you walk away changed. Like, yeah. And, and that's, when you walk away changed, you can't put a price tag on change. I mean, yeah. you walk away and your whole mind, your vision has, has everybody around you looks different now. Mm -hmm. And I've been to events like that, and I was like, Wow. Like, I want people to feel like I feel like you're, you, you can't, you can't, like, Excuse unstoppable. Me. You feel unstoppable mm -hmm. when you meet people like this. Yeah. So I want to make sure, um, like I said, my viewers, and also make sure you join. If you have not um, become a member of Akaba, make sure you join. I'm going to be joining tomorrow. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about the things to come. Um, Shanitra, thank you all for, for the ones that are, have engaged with us. Erica, um, Lynn, um, everybody who's, yeah, they don't speak like Delisa. Thank you. Thank you all, Carl. Uh, Delisa is good people. Yes. Uh, speak of Jerome Jr. <laughs> what she say? Says, speak oh. of Jerome Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, give it and it shall be given good measure. So I, I think that was one of the the best things that you could have said, you know, give back. So usually on the people of power, you, you left so many powerful things, but we normally like to tell you to leave a superpower because you're powerful. Mm -hmm. So what kind of superpower do you think that people need right now? You got to give away, like you say, give back. So mm -hmm. you're giving back, you know, use your imagination. You're giving back a superpower to people that are watching. What do you think they need so right now? Superpower is God. Okay. okay. So... You know, you must have faith. You know, I like something. I'll leave you with something that uh, Father Ron's. Uh, two things. All right, okay. so here's the first one. So Father Ron's Alakaja, the lady from Africa we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So she talks about how that she told God that if you will help me to accomplish mm -hmm. what I'm working on, mm -hmm. I will serve you the rest of my days. And mm -hmm. uh, so people ask her, did you believe that God was going to bless you that mm -hmm. way? Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah. How could I not believe it? I would have never had faith if I didn't believe it. So if they ask her, are you surprised at your success? No, I'm not surprised because I got a big God. Wow. Okay. And, and that's something that Oprah said when she said she asked God to use her. Yeah. And it just changed. I mean. And the other piece of it is, is that, you know, you, you know, you do have to believe and understand. And so here's the thing. When we talk about, you say the big power. Mm -hmm. So a couple of weeks ago at church. Uh, they had a guy about to sing a song, and before he sang the song, he says, I want to talk about the story of, you know, uh, Meshach, Meshach, but I always mess it up, and Abednego, mm -hmm. we all know the story, mm -hmm. went into the furnace, mm -hmm. and God delivered them from the fire. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, where's the key to that story? God could have delivered them from going into the furnace. Right, but that wouldn't have been the faith. Okay, I get you. That wouldn't have been the miracle. Correct. They went into the fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then God delivered them, okay? Mm -hmm. So he went on now and sung the song. And there's a line in that song that I'm never going to forget. Mm -hmm. And the line goes like this. I will find joy in the battle mm -hmm. because that is where you are, God. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, no matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. do not lose faith. Mm -hmm. Because wherever your battle is, that's where God is. And wherever God is, you should have joy. That's true. And it's real. Because I people that follow me know, and, and truth be told, I, I didn't know you were going to offer me that. So let me just let everybody know. And those were real tears. So we this was not <laughs> this was not an act. I don't even know how to act like that. Um, but I said maybe a week ago, probably, I think before, I said the next 90 days are going to be amazing. I said something like that on my Facebook. Like, the next 90 days. I'm like, I don't know. I just feel it in my spirit. The next 90 days is going to be miraculous. Next 90 days is going to be crazy. Two big things 
happened. And I was thinking about one thing, but I'm like, two big things. You're one of them with the offer, and then the other offer tomorrow. And I was just like, Lord, you are working. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speak it. Thank you. Speak it. Your words are powerful. Mm -hmm. Speak it. You, you spoke it. You believed in it. Mm -hmm. You claimed it. And now you're walking in it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when I was talking earlier about how an entrepreneur is someone who accomplishes something mm -hmm. without the resources to get it done. Huh. Huh. We all know a lot of Bible stories. Mm -hmm. And one thing is a consistent thread. All the people that God used to do great things mm -hmm. did not have the power to do that on their own. Mm -mm. Not okay. at all. They were some of the most unlikely people. <laughs> that is the truth. Okay. David goes out and slays Goliath with a slingshot. And I also said, because a lot of times you see that number there, that number, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of Facebook uh, live people, we do, you know, we get caught up on the ego and, and the views sometimes. And I got, a, I got, I guess I'll say God. I'm just going to say, I'm going to give him credit. God said, low numbers, high impact. Low numbers, high impact. And I would just like, okay. But now I see what that meant. Yeah. Well, my social media guy would tell me right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look, I'm about to tear up again. I'm not trying to cry now, Lord Jesus. Go go <sighs> go to the Icaba World, you know, oh. dot com Facebook page. Mm, I'm crying again. Okay. And like the page. I'm cutting onions, y'all. Y'all right. <laughs> I got so, some onions under this desk. I'm just chopping them up over here. <laughs> <laughs> so go to the page and like the page. Mm -hmm. uh, go to Icava CEO on LinkedIn or Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Shanitra. <laughs> I'm not. It came I'm out just, tonight, right? I, I'm just a child of God, Mr. girl. Punch came out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Listen. Yeah. And you know what's so funny? Because offline... Do you remember I said, I was like, you know, I've had people to cry on my show, and I cry. I, see, I spoke that way. I was not <laughs> supposed to cry. But you were the one, yeah. 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 I can't stand you. <laughs> Made me cry on my show. Okay. Yes, it did. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. But please make sure. Um, It's it's a three, three day. Well, actually, four days. Four days. I was going to say mm -hmm. four day event. Um, So I know our working people might not be able to go to one, but there's plenty of room for you to enjoy something. And again, the Queens of Soul will definitely be in the building. That's going to be on Friday night, correct? Mm -hmm. The social event Friday night with mm -hmm. Rico Love right. I'm hosting. And sophisticated out loud. Yes. Yeah. The master classes, let me tell you, right? That's just, that's money right there. That's like everything. Mm -hmm. Like, same party. I want, I want to know how to get to where I can party good. That's mm -hmm. going to be crazy. I'm so happy. I feel like I have Bible study again tonight. Like, I cannot with you, she. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good because you know what? God is in the midst. When he's in the midst, it, listen, things take over. So I want to, I, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you for even saying yes to the interview because I, I like, like I've, I'm going to say shot down, but a couple of people have I asked before, um, you know, their schedule sometimes. I'm not going to say they don't want to do it. I'm just going to say sometimes the schedule, and I'm a firm believer, we make, room for things that we really want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I know sometimes it gets crazy, but eventually we do what we do. Right. We, we do it. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you. Mm -hmm. I really want to thank you, and uh, I want to make sure that you get, uh, I don't know what they're laughing at, but I want to make sure that you get um, some more members tonight. Okay. You know, this is church, because you're right at the end of the church to say, we want to make sure, come on in, come on up to the, to, <laughs> you're not giving your life to a cobble, and here's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your chance tonight. Now that's the first. <laughs> you, well, you can just ask for a membership. We don't ask for the whole no, no, life. Right. Ask the collection plate around. No, no. But <laughs> but no. We want to make sure that uh you 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 do join because like I said, at twenty three dollars a month, and I just sound like a commercial now for only twenty three dollars a month, <laughs> you could be surrounded by great people and, and and get some greatness and be great and give back to the community. But it is great to be a part of something that is doing something positive we need that positive reinforcement and there are perks um when you go online there are perks um for being a member mm -hmm. um you have lunches you have gatherings there's a lot of things so yeah trust me and you won't miss 
and more to come. Okay. Yeah. So for the big ballers, you can go up to the bigger membership. But, you know, for the little fish like me, $23 a month is nothing. Again, yeah. I spend that on latte. So I'm just saying. I just had to put that out there. Yeah, yeah. But I'll put the link on, on and I'm going to share. So now you're a lifetime member. Okay. And it's free. See, I my membership's free. But you're a lifetime member of the People so Power. So I get to be a P.O.P.? You're P.O.P. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> um, yes. Pop in the collar. So, pop in the collar. So any event you have, anything, um, you just shoot me. Shoot me because I know you're not, he's not a big Facebook person. Uh, yeah. But anyway, whatever you have, flies, digital, shoot them to me. I will put them on my page, and I will definitely make sure my people get all okay. the information. All right. Okay, that's the best of it. So right. a year from now, whatever you got, say, Kitty, I got this flyer, I got this event coming up. Okay. I want you to share. You're a lifetime member of the People of Power. See, I have my perks, too. <laughs> and by then, you know, I mean, if the things are going like this now, God, oh, oh God. By then? <laughs> hey, you're getting ready to be discovered. What are you talking about? I'm like, but, I'm, but I still have room for people. Yeah. I, I don't want to stay humble. I never want to be that person that says, you know, I got to check with my agent. So do you know who Joy Reid is? Yes. Okay. What do you know about Joy Reid? Not a lot of history, but I know she's on TV. I watch her. Um, the what? What is it? The hold on, morning, morning Joy. Mm hmm. That comes yes. on Saturday or Sunday mornings. Yeah. Yeah, she does like the political. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And Sunday mornings, I'm usually work. Mm -hmm. But yes. Yeah. Do you know how she got started? How she got there? No. Okay. Don't so Joy Reid mm -hmm. was a blogger mm. in Miami. Mm. Blogging Black Miami. Okay. Okay. Then she got on talk radio. There was a news talk mm -hmm. about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And so she got on that. Then there was this woman named Yvette Miley mm -hmm. who got promoted mm -hmm. to New York with NBC. Mm. When she got to New York, mm -hmm. she turned around and she brought Joy Reid. Wow. And that's when Joy Reid blew up. Hmm. Somebody pulling somebody. I'm telling you, black people do help black people. Mm -hmm. When is the next PB networking event with Akaba? Um, we need to set the date. So right now it'll be probably either October or November. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is on the brain right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, yeah. This huge. Yeah, this is this is pretty consuming. <laughs> Matter of fact, we're also taking volunteers as well. So really, anybody want to help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, don't tell me that because you will get this. <laughs> yeah. Y'all better about, listen. Okay, wait, 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 wait. For for your for my inbox blows up, because honey, see you not on Facebook, so I'll get all the, the inquiries and I'll be like, I don't know. You gotta know. stop saying I'm not on Facebook. I am on Facebook. And we have an Icaba World page on Facebook. So we are on Facebook, everybody. He's on, when I say he's on Facebook, I went to his page. It was June, it was like 2018 left. But you know that could have been private. It probably was private. You probably have a private page. That's what it no, is. My favorite, my favorite. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, well, I'm gonna double check. Mm -mm, I'm going to show you right now. Okay. Right. Anyway, um, because people will ask, and I want to make sure, when you when you say volunteer, Delisa says, great show, thank you. When mm -hmm. you say volunteer, what entails in the volunteering? Well, it really kind of depends upon, you know, what you're able to do. Because obviously, okay. like you said, it's a four-day event. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're trying to make sure is that everybody has a great okay, experience. Black eye. Oh, so that's going to okay. be ugly later. Okay, go so, ahead. Okay, so, make sure. So, I mean, you know, you can do everything from... You know, we got hosts, we got hostesses, we got people who are helping with things like the master classes. We got people who might help with some transportation. We got people who may help with an event set up and that kind of stuff, help with, you know, passing out information, just being there. So if somebody's walking around trying to figure out how to get somewhere, that we've got somebody there who's saying, hey, look. At the diplomat. At the diplomat. I want to be a greeter. Okay, there you go. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, welcome. Oh, we better go. What time is it? It's 9.30. Okay. I thought okay. your show was over at 9 o'clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we gotta go. But, yeah. Um, so, anyway, you are... So how many How many volunteers do you need? Oh, you can never have too many. So, anybody who wants to volunteer, please... Do a background e check. Email. <laughs> yeah, really. Email. <laughs> With these group. <laughs> email <laughs> email me sorry. at CEO mm -hmm. at... IcabaWorld.com. Erica, get, Erica, get on the volunteer list, honey. You, you'll, you'll be CEO at I C A B as in boy A W O R L D dot com. Mm. Mm -hmm. and just put volu volunteer in the heading. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. you're about to, your box is about to blow up. But anyway, take advantage of all this information, people. I want to thank okay. you all for joining us. You could have been oh, anywhere. Oh, hold but. it, hold it. i tell you what, we're going to do another thing. Oh. All right. Anybody who emails me at C. Look at, look at this one. I told you, Eric. Eric will be a volunteer. Eric, cool. you better vote. You better <laughs> look at Lynn. Le- Le- like, hey, I'm right. I can right there with you, girl. <laughs> Anybody who is listening to this show mm-hmm. and wants to go, mm-hmm. if you email, Wait a go where now? Because you got to the Hall of Fame. You got four events. Well, all of us part of the Hall of Fame weekend. Okay. Okay. So here's the deal. Okay. Anybody who wants to go because of you and your show. Oh. Okay. Let's see. All right, we want people to know it pays to view POP. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. Email me before midnight tonight, mm-hmm. okay? Before midnight tonight, mm-hmm. and I will give you a coupon that will get you $50 off of whatever ticket that you buy to go to the event. That's pretty deep. So, email me before midnight tonight if it's in my inbox mm-hmm. before midnight tonight. I will reply back to you with a coupon code that will get you $50 off of your registration. You all be around millionaires and billionaires. Let me tell you something, people. You see me? I'm looking serious now. If you don't take advantage of this, you are asleep. You have five more months until the end of the year to basically get your goals together. But you're going to be around people who are amazing. Uh, when I tell you life-changing, like, uh, I'm going to walk away. I'm like, y'all are not going to know me no more. I'm going to be brand new. You're a dame. Check this out. This lady right here. Brand new. That's one of our Atlanta members. Oh, hey, Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta in the house. Yeah, it's getting some Georgia love. You know, I got some love in um, South Africa. I was sharing in South Africa with my last show. Were you? Mm-hmm. Okay. See? Real People cool. People pop on global. Yes, okay. Yeah, thanks Is for checking coming? in, Yordane. Yeah, she's oh, coming. Okay. Yordane, you're coming to the uh, Hall of Fame, right? Margo Knowles Jackson. Okay. Yeah, that's when people start <laughs> popping up. So yeah. make sure you um, you do the instructions. I'm going to replay the show as well. So, yeah, I'm probably going to have to let people know that the... Because <laughs> I'm going to do a watch party. I'm going to, you know, I share. I keep sharing it. Yeah. So I have to let them know it's only for t- tonight. Margo Knowles says hello. Hey, Margo. Margo, mm, girl, I don't know if you've been anywhere lately, but got to check out this event. It's, 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 it's it. It's the who's who. This definitely is the who's who. Not up on beach. It's the Hall of Fame. Yeah, the Hall of Fame of the world. <laughs> this is deep. I love it. So make sure. And I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. All right. I know we got to go. It's late. Uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you. I cry. Y'all can pick at me. I don't care. It was worth the ugly cry. <laughs> Some things are worth the ugly cry. And tonight was worth the ugly cry. So, you know, tomorrow and then a couple more weeks, y'all going to see another ugly cry. But it's okay. It's good. It's all good. And I plan on giving back. I promise. Scouts honor um, for people who are deserving, people who are trying, that I'm honestly seeing trying. Like mm-hmm. I said, people of power has opened up a lot of um, doors for a lot of people, too. And I didn't really realize until people come back and tell me. They're like, girl, we have a new show. Da, 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 da. This is why we do this every week. So, low numbers. High impact. So thank you all. Uh, good night, great show. Thank you, Erica. Make sure you follow. One thing I can say about Erica, Erica gonna follow up. Now that okay. girl there, she owns her own salon. She's on it. Huh? Yeah, she's a, she's an entrepreneur too. So okay. she she's gonna take some of this information back. Trust me. She's writing right. it down. So you all have a good night. Please make sure you hit the share button. Sharing is caring, and we're getting the information out. And um, don't forget to. You know, get your membership. I'm going to put all the information on the top of the video. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're another entrepreneur doing a lot of great things. So make sure you all get your tickets. All right? It's been fun. Bye.